there. Now I'm up in my chamber end. And so we're going to slowly pull out of that. Hopefully leaving a nice, smooth, clean cut. And hopefully we'll get rid of that hump out of there. And of course it's an inter interrupted cut because I got my extractor cut that's in there already. And it's doing good so far. So I got the high spot in the middle, so we'll see if this cleans up all the way up to the end. It's looking good so far. Nope. <laughs> so that proves right there that it was it was off a little bit. That looks a lot better than it was. And actually that's a pretty nice smooth surface. I'm probably just going to leave that. The one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little emery cloth and come right on the end of the chamber there and just knock that edge off. There isn't really an edge there now, <clears throat> but we want to make sure that it's not there at all. So you could use um, 320 or 400. I think, what do I got here? 600. And all we're going to do is just knock off, make sure it's not sharp. Because this is where you're a lot of custom barrels, if people don't knock this edge off, you'll get scratches in your cases. And then people wonder what it's, where it's from. So the only part of this I'm touching is where the cone starts between the cone and the chamber, just on that edge. I could come out here and do this. But it's kind of tough with that extractor cut there now. As you can see, it'll rip your paper up. So let's look at that. And you can feel in there. You just want to break the edge. All right. So now I'm going to come in the chamber here and look to see uh, this chamber looks pretty rough. And you don't want them to be like a mirror, but you don't want, this one's got a bunch of scratches and stuff in it. Let's we'll see if I can get my paper in there. This is again 600. And all I'm doing here is trying to polish it a little bit, going in and out. Trying to stay relatively even. All we're doing here is the body wall. We don't have to worry about the neck. We don't have to worry about the shoulder angle. And this would usually be more than enough. Usually you shouldn't even have to do this if you got a nice sharp chamber reamer and you reamed it right, but... I saw some uh, scratches and some rings in the case. I got some cases with this rifle and that's indicative, indicative of a uh, bad chamber depending on what kind of nicks and scratches you got in there. All right, so that looks pretty good actually there. So now what I'm gonna do that I got that cleaned up is I'm going to find, uh, where is it? We'll do this stuff right here. Uh, let's see, we'll do the green one. So I'm going to take a little bit of, in this case, green scotch Bright, And I talked to a guy that um, is pretty well known in the industry for building 1911s and member of the Custom Gunmakers Guild. And he suggested this to me. Although I used to do it before, but it's been a while. Let me get, um, cut this down a little more. All we're doing here is, we don't want a mirror finish in there. We just want kind of a burnish, burnish chamber. 
Because this is a hunting rifle, so we're not trying to shoot and bench rest with this thing or anything. So I'm just going to stick this in there, and all it is is scotch bright. <coughs> for about five seconds and then we'll take a look at our chamber and see what it looks like. It looks pretty good to me. I mean it's it's kind of it's hard to explain it's polished but it's burnished and it's kind of hard to show on my camera I'm gonna do it one more time here. be good enough. The reason for this is that we want a little little bit of a burnish in there so our case doesn't stick to the chamber wall. So that's looking pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to call that good. We've got our cone cleaned up, we've got our chamber cleaned up a little bit. Now what we're going to do is flip it around, re-indicate it, and then cut our muzzle end. So now we've got our crown set up here. We indicated, um, and this is, sorry, I'm thinking off topic here, but we indicated our chamber end, and then again we indicated our muzzle end out to zero. Uh, some barrels flex or have bows, naturally have bows in them. Uh, you know, it's very minuscule, but they're usually there within the bore. <clears throat> what we're doing here is we're just going off the ends and we're gonna within an inch here I was zeroed out. So over an inch indicating rod I was zeroed out at my muzzle end. And uh, for a muzzle I think for this particular rifle that's pretty good. So what we're gonna do is I got a little bit in here and it's just uh, it's nothing special. I still got my compound set at 45 degrees so that's gonna be our little recess here and I'm just gonna follow kind of what they did here and so I'm just gonna cut in a little bit and then pull out to approximately where they are and then compound my 45 out and then cut straight out and then we'll finish this up here I'm going to go back in because they chamfered inside the muzzle there and I want to try and get rid of that chamfer. There's no reason to have a big chamfer like that in there. So what we're doing here is we're just pulling this, feeding this guy out ever so slowly to try and get a nice finish on there. Very, very slow. If you do this properly, you shouldn't have to go back with any sort of a cleaning, you know, sandpaper or anything to clean this up. It should be nice and smooth. So that's pretty close to my chamfer there. I'm going to set my cross slide to zero. And I'm going to set my compound to zero actually, so I have a reference here when I actually come back if I need to. So now we're just going to back out with our cross slide. And we'll see if that cleaned up our chamfer, which it didn't. So what I'm going to do is crank this guy back in to where my zero was and I actually lost my zero there but right there and I'm gonna crank out three thousandths reset my zero hopefully it'll stick this time and then crank out again And 
still haven't cleaned it up, so we'll try it one more time. Crank back into zero. On my compound. Back out, we'll do another two thousands on my cross slide. And then start over with our cut here. Still not getting it. Let's try it again. Zero the compound, we'll go at three thousands. There we go, that cleaned it up. So you can do whatever angle you want here. I'm doing 45 just because I was set up at 45. And then what we're going to do now is I'm going to come back across the outside. And what I'm going to do first, take the slack out of my compound. And then from the inside out, cut our very outside just nice and square with the bore. Nice and slow. I apologize, my camera is wobbling a little bit there, but and we probably went out of focus there, but all right. So let's see if you can take a look at that. Look at that. Nice and shiny. So the only thing left to do here is uh, come on the outside of this with a file to break our edge. And they already kind of have it broke there, but we're just going to clean it up a little bit more. And I want to round this off. By the time, uh, and all this is doing is basically just breaking the edge so we don't have a sharp corner that will cut anything. And my dirty file there, don't mind that. But All right, last but not least on that guy, I'm just gonna take a little um, sandpaper 600 grit right on the corner of this on that outside corner. I have no need to touch the inside corner there. There we go. There we go. All right, new and improved lathe cam 3.0. Final step here is we're gonna sand this guy down. So what I got set up here is I got paper towels uh, protecting my ways and everything so I don't get a bunch of sand or dust and sand and stuff in there. <clears throat> and then, I don't know what I'm going to, I'm going to try a few grits of sandpaper here and this is just between centers and I have a brass uh, crown saver that I made on this end. And you can put one on this end but... Um, it butts up with these coned breeches, it butts up pretty good inside there. And we're not putting a lot of pressure on here, all it's doing is spinning. <clears throat> so we're going to try a few grits here, and, and uh, I'll probably speed this up because it's kind of boring to watch, but we'll sand this up. And one more thing too is I got marking, chamber markings here. So I'm probably going to, uh, I don't know how much I'm going to do back here. We'll see. But I'll polish most of this up pretty good and then we'll get back to the chamber end here. And I might be able to clean it up alright. Just crank it up. We'll start with the 320 here. Take a strip out and fire up the lid and check it out. 
when you're doing this, you never want to wrap. You never want to wrap this stuff around your hand or hold it like between your fingers. It's the best way because I have gotten cut pretty bad getting emery cloth ripped out of my hand. I think I'll call that good. It's uh, I like them looking like that, a little shiny, but not polished for a hunting rifle. I'm gonna move over to my chamber end here, and this is gonna be the tricky part. So I'll just try and zoom in here. All right. So I'm going to chat with you guys a little bit about this barrel and, and what happened with it. So I did everything you just saw. And uh, it should work okay for what I'm going to use it for. Like I said, this is, this is my personal barrel. I'm not ever going to sell this to anybody. So I know exactly what's wrong with it. I know what I did to it to fix it. And... Um, I'll shoot it and see what happens. If it doesn't shoot, I will cut it off, rethread, rechamber, or um, I don't know, get a new barrel. We'll see. Um, I also wanted to mention when you saw the crown, when I was doing the crown, it looked like the bore had run out. And that was actually because I hadn't cut in deep enough to get rid of that chamfer that they put right at the end of the land. So, uh, after I got done recording, I went through and I, I made one more final cut in there to clean that up. And that's what was given that, because I had a, like a half moon, uh, they cut it off to begin with. And I, uh, this thing has been zeroed out when I did it, so uh, I cleaned it up and it's it, it was running true. Um, also, I know that there's, uh, you know, 6 thousandths run out between the chamber and the threads. I'm aware of that and I chose to do what I did with it. If this was a customer's barrel, if I, if I was doing this for somebody, I would never send this out like that. And the sad thing about it is the guy who did this, I know exactly who did it too, um, sent it out that way. And unless you have you know, some equipment to, to pull this thing apart and measure it, the average guy having this rifle built would have no idea that he basically screwed this entire barrel up and it <clears throat> I don't know it's uh it's kind of sad it gives gunsmiths a bad name when when people like that do that but you know like I said you'd never know unless you pulled it apart and looked at it and I would have I, I would have never known either like I said I bought this thing thinking that one guy built it and I pulled it apart and I know for a fact he didn't do it because he never does he never did work like this um, he never, in this mill cut is off, he never milled and <clears throat> he never, you never put red Loctite on threads on a rifle receiver. Um, some guys do it on ARs, but that's different. This, you don't do it on rifle receivers. You should cut your threads to fit. So, ugh, anyways, a little frustrating. <clears throat> but I'm going to throw this thing back together, I'm going to polish up the bolt, and I'll show you kind of what it looks like before 
um, after I get it back together. And hopefully it'll shoot. Uh, that 6000 is right out between the bore, I'm not too worried about it with this. It's an old military infield, so um, they can be extremely accurate receivers, but in this case, uh, we'll shoot it and see. So let's put it, I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to polish a bolt up and show you kind of what it all looks like when we're done. Not that it's anything special, but we'll take a look. All right. There she be, all polished up. Got the bolt polished up. And the barrel's pretty much done, I guess, as far as uh, trying to correct it. Again, like I said, to do it correctly, um, cut that whole end off. Uh, you'd probably end up cutting the chamber off, too, and the threads, and you'd set this thing back. Actually, if you if you cut the threads off, that would probably be enough to set it back, but you'd have to go in and um, <laughs> too much for uh, too much for this. Anyways, here's what I did with this one. So hopefully it works out. Um, once I get a chance to shoot it, I'll let you guys know. It's been quite a while since I actually got to the range, and um, I might put this in a different stock to the stock that I had. As an old Boyd's, and I don't, I'm not a big fan of uh, this particular one that I have here, so <sighs> I might restock it. But, anyways, there we go. That's kind of working up a, a rifle receiver, kind of some of the simple things. Not a receiver, but a barrel. Uh, mainly, <laughs> this video was to show you how to uh, crown, recrown a, a hunting barrel with a recessed. Um, hunting crown basically and uh, I don't know we kind of got off topic but that's what happens when you break into a can of worms you end up fixing a bunch of other stuff you weren't originally planning on fixing so there we go if you guys like that found it interesting be sure to like below leave me a comment I sure appreciate uh, all the comments that everybody leaves me and I reply to every single one of them and be sure to go to my channel and subscribe. I got a bunch of other videos on there like this and a bunch of other topics on machining and lathe work and all that good stuff. So till next time, stay safe on your machines and shoot safe. I'll see you guys next time.